Thanks to Shortform, my go-to book summary service, for sponsoring this video. Hi, it's Simon. Welcome or welcome back to Better Creating. Recently, I've been thinking about what helps people get ahead of the crowd. It can often seem that successful people who unlock a direction in life or work that you want to go in have some hidden knowledge or secret code that you just can't access. So I asked one big question and then did some research. What are the unusual and hidden traits of winners? So here we go, seven unusual traits you can develop and where to learn them, even if you don't have that billionaire mentor on speed dial. Trust me, you'll wish you knew these earlier. And all the books and references we talk about in the video are listed in the description. Trait number one, the ability to differentiate between luck and skill. So you could argue that many of us have been caught thinking something like this. Good outcome, I'm a genius. Bad outcome, I'm just unlucky. But top performers have a deeper understanding of something called the luck skill continuum. Michael Marbosin's amazing book, The Success Equation, Untangling Skill and Luck in Business, Sport and Investing, is well worth a read. He brilliantly shares this idea that there is a continuum or spectrum of outcomes based on a balance of luck and skill. So imagine the roulette table at one end and the chessboard at the other. Clear and out, right? Great performers identify where their activities or outcomes sit on that scale and adjust their future actions based on it. Just watch something like Drive to Survive and how the top Formula One teams assess their results and improve on them. A level of data-driven, focused self-reflection is so powerful. Plus, oh, it's just good telly, isn't it? Lewis Hamilton, Toto Wolff. I salute you. Number two, cultivate self-awareness. Well, that just had to follow the last one, right? The most successful people in the world are hyper self-aware. They can identify what Ash Ali and Hassan Kuba call an unfair advantage, an edge you can exploit relative to the world and use to your advantage. Think of it like this. How can you play games in life that favor your unfair advantage over and over again? In other words, don't focus on your weaknesses. Put your energy full tilt into pressing your strengths and you'll get a lot further, a lot faster, in my opinion. I highly recommend adding the unfair advantage to your reading list or reading a summary to see if you wanna check it out further. The other obvious place to develop this trait is journaling. And the best place to supercharge your reflection is through that amazing ancient world of Stoic philosophers. Trust me, it's completely surprising how contemporary Marcus Aurelius's ideas and methods still feel in his really old book, Meditations. Other great resources, a little bit newer than that, are Ryan Holiday's daily Stoic blog and channels, and my curated Notion journaling template with Stoic prompts could help you develop and practice uh, a focused self-reflection daily workout. Nice. Get on it, check it out, and while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't for more great tools and tech to build a more productive and creative life. Well, that leads us nicely to trait number three, focusing on questions, not answers. Top performers in any field always ask great questions, allowing them to gather meaningful and useful insights far more effectively. This can result in rapid growth, helping you more effectively focus your energy, find the best way to do things, and discover amazing opportunities to lead in your field. The Socratic Way of Questioning is a great book to read to help you develop this skill of understanding what the right questions are to ask in the first place. And Tim Ferriss has a piece in Tools of the Titans about asking yourself the hard questions. It's worth a go. In fact, today's sponsor, Shortform, have created an interactive questionnaire for doing just that. So Shortform is a kind of super-powered non-fiction book summary tool, and I'm using it a lot these days, particularly for researching videos like this. First off, the app is not intended as a replacement for reading books, but I've loved using it to read a condensed view of a book so that I have a clearer overview before I read it in full. I've also found Shortform to be a great way to recap the key ideas from from one I read a while ago. The summary of Tools of the Titans is a fantastic example. There's always a one-pager covering the main ideas of the whole book, then a chapter-by-chapter -chapter summary in detail, and they also build on those ideas with interactive reflections and exercises to engage deeper. Plus, if the author is saying something bold or unusual in one direction, they will also offer short-form notes that suggest alternative viewpoints or different perspectives that you can consider so you aren't just reading in a bubble. It's really cool. 
So if you're like me and want to deepen your understanding in subjects like self-improvement, productivity, or entrepreneurship, give Shortform a try through my special link, shortform.com forward slash better creating. That gives you five days unlimited access and a 20% discount on the annual subscription when joining. That's essentially two and a half months free. New book guides and articles are published every week. And as a subscriber, you'll get to vote on what books are covered. Okay, number four on the list of unusual traits we should be developing, know how to compartmentalize. Trust me, the ability to turn off outside distractions and stresses and focus on the essential task at hand in the moment is massive when it comes to effectively getting ahead with your work or play. Learn this and you'll find you'll cover much more ground with much less effort. I highly recommend a read of Greg McEwen's book, Essentialism and Effortless, his newest one, for a more detailed dive into this subject matter. And I'm a huge fan of The One Thing by Gary Keller, a great read on how to focus on what you should be doing each day. Now, a more practical tool I use when compartmentalizing is using a second brain system that helps me let go of the other worries and commitments in my life because I know that in that system they're being recorded, planned for, or automated to come back to me. Now a system like this, I use Notion, allows you to switch off from the efforts of holding everything at once get present and active on the one thing that really matters to move things forward. If you're new here, check out my Notion playlist on how I'm using uh, Notion to build systems like this, as well as my templates that are available on Gumroad. Trait number five is being a great storyteller, not a salesperson. I listened to a great interview on Stephen Bartlett's brilliant podcast, The Diary of a CEO, last week. And he was talking to the author, Daniel Pink, and they talked about the power of storytelling as something at the heart of success and effectiveness in today's world. Pink's book, To Sell is Human, suggests we are all in sales now, whether we choose to be or not. What do you think about this bold statement? If you think about it, we all go through some act of selling most days, convincing a person of our ideas, putting ourselves forward for work or jobs, advertising our services, and so on. But the people who are truly effective at this understand that selling is really just bad storytelling. As Bartlett clarified in the interview, tell stories until people get uncomfortable enough that they feel they need it. If you have something at the end that can improve people's lives, then you become a business person as well as a storyteller. Pretty cool. And on that note, for how storytelling is the basis of our existence, Sapiens by Noah Yuval Harari is absolutely brilliant. Next up, this one's particularly unexpected, being paranoid. Okay, stay with me on this one. It's kind of brilliant to realize. To quote Josh Wolf, failure comes from the failure to imagine failure. I recommend looking at Tim Ferriss's fear setting exercise, cleverly coined as the opposite to goal setting. It's the process of unpicking and imagining the worst case scenarios and how you would and could respond to them before or after they have happened. It's something most of us are really, well, scared to do, right? Well, that's probably why you should start. It's got me through some challenging situations and made some great things happen in the last year. Links in the description, plus there is a fear setting template page in that Notion journaling template I mentioned before. But if you want to get good at goal setting, two great places to start are Goals by Brian Tracy and The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Okay, this is a big one. Great performers understand strategy and influence. And at the same time, they act despite the likelihood of failure. Okay, that's two, but I like the number seven. So in general, it's relatively easy to develop a strategy for your goals. It is much harder though to develop the strategy and influence people to execute against those goals effectively. Because let's face it, a leader who doesn't affect anyone is really just the person in charge. When you can do both, you can accomplish literally anything. A great place to start thinking about these ideas is John Maxwell's book on leadership, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. Well, all that's left to do for you lot is take action. So you can start with all the books listed in the description, checking out short form, and I also share the lessons I learned from building a serious passive income in this video and share more on building a Notion second brain system to help you stay truly on top of your life in this one. It would be great if you subscribed, amazing if you left a comment, and I'll see you on the next one.